Good morning, guys. I am still cranking on the Polo Coupe. And to be honest, I don't think I'm gonna film a bunch today because I have so much to do. I've had to replan a few things on the suspension and it's Tuesday as I'm recording this and I'm trying to have the car loaded up on Friday or Saturday at the very latest because we leave Sunday night. So um, I'm gonna try to explain some of the things I'm doing throughout the day, but I'm just gonna, I'm gonna try to do my best to document this. But I have to build a new lower mount on the strut bodies to gain a little bit of negative camber because with the offsets of the mark one rabbit knuckles on the 2f polo coupe it's trying to positive camber the wheels out when it when it airs down and i've got eight inch wide wheels up front so it's poking the top out quite a way so i'm going to cnc cut i'm in my shop right now i'm gonna i'm gonna cad design a new dropout to weld on to the uh, lower strut mount but i'm also going to laser cut them out of cardboard first get the templates just right, then take the, the finished file to my dad's CNC plasma machine, cut it out of 3 16 inch steel, and then weld them on. And I'm just gonna just get it done so I can get a little bit of fixed camber on the, uh, on the front wheels to tuck the front of the tires underneath the car. So I got a file designed and got a few cardboard pieces cut out on my laser machine. As you can see, it's gonna take place for the, um, the top bolt slot. This airlift dropout doesn't make much sense to me because the top hole is slotted for camber adjustment, but there's nothing for a cam washer to lock against. So if you were to push this knuckle all the way in and tighten the bolt down, all it's gonna take is like a bridge expansion joint or a pothole or something real aggressive for shock load to move that bolt out and now your camber is out again. So I don't, like I need more camber in the front because of this setup, but I don't wanna just slot this slot more so I can crank the knuckle in farther to just tighten the bolt down because all it's gonna take is a bump in the road to push that bolt back out, no matter how tight it is, and now my camber is out of adjustment again. So what I'm doing is I'm going to open that slot all the way up, then weld this over it. And as you can see, I'm back about three quarters of an inch and I'm making that hole not slotted. It's gonna be the same diameter as the bolts. That way when I run my bolt through, it's held in place by the hole and it won't go anywhere. And that's gonna just be my fixed camber. So that's what I'm working on now. So we're cutting the plates out now. We cut one, cleaned it up a little bit, and just test fit it before cutting the other three. And um, it's gonna work work just right. Get the radius up top, comparable to the dropout and uh, with the offset hole for the bolt. And so what I'm gonna do next, once we get the other two cut out, is just clean up all the powder coat off of this dropout. Um, open this slot up more for the offset hole in the plate and uh, they'll be ready to weld on. All right, so I got the gussets uh, cleaned up and prepped, ready to go. All right, I'm back at my shop. I did a lot of work at my dad's shop that I didn't film just because I just can't do all of this stuff and get these projects done with the time I have. So what I did was I got the dropouts, the new dropout mounts, but I didn't finish weld them. Basically I put a tack on top and a bead across the bottom just in case, now that I get them in the car, just in case I need to, um, change where they sit, you know, if it's too much camber or not enough camber. So 
this may not be finished. So regardless, if this sits where I want it to, I'm gonna take everything back to my dad's shop and re-weld everything, finish weld it up. What else I did was drastically modified the steering arms because on both sides, here and the other side, the inner lip of the wheel was almost touching this because of how far out it, it came. And on this side, I had a hard time getting, I couldn't get my leader line in because this came out too far for how far up I need this on the body. So I basically cut both sides off and then massaged them with the flap wheel, you know, and, and just kind of made them look like that's the way they were supposed to be. So I had to take quite a bit of material off of both sides. So I want to get everything mounted up front, make sure that the new dropout mounts add the camber that I need to get the wheel sitting where I want it, and then get everything plumbed in and turn the management on and calibrate it and get that turned on so I can get my range of motion sorted out. Because I wanna know where my full collapse is and where my full height is before I weld all of this up. So as of right now, I can still loosen these lock rings and adjust everything. If I need to extend my overall stretch and overall length of the strut body, or if I wanna bring them up a little bit closer. So that's what we're doing. All right guys, an update. I've been working all day and all night. It's about 10 o'clock right now at night and uh, I, haven't, I haven't filmed anything because I'm, I'm kind of over it. Uh, I was really grinding hard the last couple weeks on not just the car, but the YouTube stuff and trying to film and then edit all night long and then only get a few hours worth of sleep and get right to it the next day. Between jobs coming in that I need to get out before this trip in the laser shop and just all sorts of other stuff that's on my plate right now, and then this car, every minute of the day needed to be dedicated to this car for the amount of work I have to do to get done uh, in the next three or four days. And uh, yeah, so this is the first time I've picked up the camera since, I don't know, midday, I guess. I've got some measurements for my Ackerman angle and alignment. And unfortunately that means I need to take my steering rack apart and get my tie rod arms out and shorten them, which I have to do tomorrow. So the driver's side in this car isn't adjustable. It's got an eyelet on one end and it just bolts in and that's a static reach the whole time. The adjustment is on the passenger side at the tie rod end and at the rack itself. The tie rod tube is, is like a giant threaded tube. So the eyelet that it mounts to at the steering rack is threaded as well. So there's a jam nut on both ends of the tie rod. Anyone who's been into this knows exactly what I'm talking about. I'm explaining this for basically anyone that hasn't been into one of these cars. So unfortunately, I have to section my tie rods down. That was a development today that I realized I had to do, and I spent a lot of time today trying to do everything I could to avoid that, because that's just like another project in itself. When I get everything set down on the wheels, maybe I'll get a couple walk arounds, show you, because it's, it's, the car's lower than it was last time you guys saw the car on the wheels. But what I do need to do is I need to modify my arches and these are riveted in they're they're normally they're normally screws phillips head screws and they're not to be riveted in and i don't have any rivets here so i like for tonight i'm not gonna drill all these out and take this off roll my fender because i don't want to cut the fender i want to roll the fender put the flare back on and then i'm going to trim the flare so i can sit in my flip in my tire all right guys we're in my father's shop it's the next morning. I think this episode's three days worth of me not caring about documenting this project anymore. I got my tie rods pulled out last night. This is driver's side. This is passenger side. And as I mentioned, and again, I'm reiterating all this stuff because I'm filming another day and I can't remember what I've already talked about. I have to shorten both tie rods by about an inch and a half. And that's a measurement that I took, I think, after I stopped filming. But I need to shorten this one an inch and a half. And this driver's side is not adjustable. This is just a link arm. So I have to shorten that. And this one is adjustable. This one obviously is where you get your alignment and whatnot. So there are two different diameters. So I'm gonna now that I've got my measurements sorted out that I need to shorten them down for, I'm gonna cut them, figure out if I need to sleeve them or pin them. So this one's a larger overall OD than the passenger side. So gonna get them cut and uh, yeah, get figuring out what we have for parts and material.
So I decided uh, to put a piece of rod inside and basically pin the tie rod tube. My father had a, a piece of half inch rod stock sitting on the scrap pile over there and the inner diameter of this is just under half inch. So I'll be able to finesse it a little bit and get it in there. That way I'm pinning it and uh, can weld to it rather than putting a sleeve over it. So I got a piece of the half inch rod stock cut down to about an inch and a half so I can get about three quarters of an inch in on each side. Uh, I had to chuck it in the drill press and actually like grind it down a little bit because the inside of this tie rod tube is um, metric since the pole is from Germany. So it wasn't perfectly half inch ID but I uh, got them to fit. As you can see I've got it slid in on one side. I'm going to prep the tube a little bit more, put a little bit more of a, an angle, like a bevel on it. So I've got a little bit of a valley to weld into. And um, yeah, put these together, weld them up and right onto the driver's side, keep on moving. All right, so again, I didn't film finishing everything. I did get a couple clips of welding them up, uh, but then finished them, put them in the vise, cleaned them up. So now I'm just gonna paint them. I'm gonna get the jam ends, the, the bar ends out again. I just put them together for a couple photos. Gonna paint them, and while I'm doing that, get over to the shop, figure everything else out that I have to do today. All right guys, it's almost midnight. I've got everything put back in the car. The front suspension still needs to come back out once more to get finished welded and then painted. I need to weld my tie rod arms into place one final time, but the shortened tie rods are in the car. And I worked on the rear a whole bunch. I had to do a bunch of fender arch work. So here we go you going on it's the problem with hatchbacks even with the deck lid in this is gonna be super loud well it's calibrated so everything seems to be mounted properly system ready to use All right, guys, I'm ending the video there. I myself, at this point, am curious to see what this episode looked like because I did so much work and didn't film half of it. So, uh, and I'm not editing it tonight. It's just about midnight and I still have more work to do. Uh, maintenance stuff. Oh, I didn't even mention this. Huge shout out to my friend Steve Paris from Wales, United Kingdom for ordering a bunch of European Volkswagen Polo specific uh, maintenance parts. Braking system, fuel system, ignition system, drivetrain, uh, a bunch of parts um, that I didn't think was gonna be here in time because it, it was just out across the ocean somewhere and my tracking number wasn't working. Well, it showed up this morning. Gotta get the bumpers on. Huge shout out to my friend Steve Lafierre. I always mispronounce his name, I think, his last name. But thank you so much, Steve. 
uh, for all the help on the bumpers. As I mentioned in another episode, he took the bumpers back because he felt that they were too dark against the paint on the car. We're getting close, guys. We're getting close. Um, I didn't think at this point I was going to have time to detail the car properly. I do have some extra paint that Steve gave me to cover up that gouge in the side of the car. But my boy Aiden Templin uh, texted me today and was like, hey, what if we detail the car in Helen? I was assuming that's what I was gonna have to do anyway, but Aiden is a detail master and he really wants to have his way with this car and he's gonna be in Helen. So maybe we do an episode while we're in Helen of him going around the car and uh, making the work that my friend Rob Mersaldi from Dent Patrol did really shine because Rob did a bunch of Dent PDR work on this car and um, I'm real excited to get this thing detailed. I'm so stoked on it. I really am. Being from America and in the Volkswagens, I've always, always loved Polos. And I'm stoked that this is the second one I've owned. But really, nonetheless, excited that this car is uh, here and excited to hopefully get it finished in time for Helen. That's enough for now. Thank you so much, guys, for all the support, the continued support. Still have some shirts and stickers, some, some key rings, and a few other things available on the web store. The link to the Ludwig's Garage and Governor's Club web store is in the description below. Thank you so much again to Bag Riders, Rotiform, ECS Tuning, all my other friends who have had a hand in this project. Rob Mersaldi, Steve Paris for the parts, Steve Leffier for the bumpers. Thank you guys. I'll see you in the next episode.